Hello, hello, everyone. Sorry for the delay this evening. Uh, I got a little held up. And, sorry for the delay this evening. Oh, uh, turn that off. Sorry. Yep, sorry. A lot of, a lot of issues. So. <laughs> uh, we're an hour late. It's all my fault. But uh, today is episode number 37 of uh, SEO Unmasked. It's not May 31st. It is June 7th. Glad to have you with us. Sorry for those of you that I know usually only a few people watch live right away, but we're an hour late. My bad. Uh, we got Vin and Steve here. They've been patiently waiting. Um, if you ever get a mortgage, yeah, it's, been a, it's been a hard wait, but you know. you know, if you ever get a mortgage, Vin and I were just talking. You know, he's he just went through this shit last year. When you're self-employed, man, there's a lot of fucking hoops you got to jump through to. But it's almost over for me. Vin made it through, still alive. So just be warned. And I have all this fun coming up, uh, probably next year, <laughs> and definitely the year after. So I'm, after you guys' experiences, I'm really looking forward to it again. Last yeah. time I last time I moved house where I, I needed to get a mortgage, it, um, it was back in the old days. Like you got one piece of paper, you put your name on it and how much you earned and a couple of other things like yeah. where you lived and sent it in and like a week later you moved into the house <laughs> <laughs> things have changed a bit since then with the uh, banks, oh. banks they have every invoice I've ever sent out in the last nine months they have every bank statement they have every PayPal transaction I have to I have to write letters of affidavit saying I'm not laundering money Wait, for your business? Yeah. What the? F that should be off limits. Yeah, they have all my business stuff too. That's crazy. So this is I'm gonna make the switch to a corporation. Uh, okay. Yeah, because I'm a single member LLC. I just use it for pass through protection. Yeah, it's life's much easier with a real corporation. Uh, yeah, because then I would just have to have my W twos from the business that paid me. You know, my my own business that paid me. But you know, whatever. It's fucked up. But here we are. Make America great again. <laughs> uh, you guys want well, to get rolling with the news, and I'll be right back. I don't think we can tackle fixing the banks. I think uh, Vin and I both escaped the finance industry, so yeah, I think um, that's the solution: is escape. <laughs> don't try and fix it. <laughs> Um, I definitely wouldn't go back, would you, Vin? No, no, not at all. I truly do enjoy our uh, our business now. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot better. It's it's a funny old business, but banking was uh, something else, that's for sure. Um, uh, for me, just dealing with uh, the constant daily phone calls of, of clients that really didn't understand what, what we were doing was a headache, uh, you know, enough of a headache to, for me to get out of there. Yeah, it's amazing when you think back, like how little time you spend on the phone in normal businesses, and like you're at, in a banking or finance role, like eighty percent of your day is on the phone to someone. Yeah. Just... Well, we did re we did retirement planning, so everything I had to deal with, with was, uh, you know, grandmas or grandpas asking me the craziest, the craziest questions. But... I feel now we there. just now we just now we just get to manage our scrub rates. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, a little lead, little Leedscon joke there for you boys who watched the Leedscon episode. <laughs> oh. I don't think that I think that's one we're going to go to again. Yeah, we're doing uh, pub pubcon, right? Yeah, we're doing pubcon. Yeah, which I thought stood for publisher conference, but actually it. Um, it's called PubCon because it's another one of these British conferences that started in a tiny pub. Um, Brighton SEO is the same. It started in a small room above a pub in Brighton. And now it's one of Europe's biggest marketing conferences. And apparently PubCon was the same story. They started in a tiny pub. And it was really? pub, it stood for pub conference, according to their website. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I read that the first time when we went to uh, book our tickets and stuff. Um, I got yeah. my flights out. I got the transatlantic flights booked. I figured um, I shouldn't leave that to the last minute this time. <laughs> I, I have my flights booked for the one I'm going to in two weeks with Garrett. Uh, what's it? A Minnesota Search Summit. But I have to do a little plane hopping because I'm going to Disney a couple of days before Vegas. 
So I got to figure that out. Yeah, that'll be easy enough. What's that? That'll be easy enough. Rack up some points. Yeah, well, you know, I just figured how it works because I'm leaving New York with my wife to go down to Orlando, but then I'm sending her home by herself and I'm going to Vegas. Um, so I just got to figure out how to uh, split the. Uh, You'll either be better. You'll either be better off booking yourselves all separately, mm -hmm. and then just like doing the seat reservation like at the same time, yeah, or, yeah. Use, or using a travel agent. If, yeah, because if you ever uh, get out of it, if you have your wife next to you, uh, like obviously you're not going to deduct your wife's airfare. The IRS would definitely make a point. Like, did you really do? Or you know, you know what I mean? I, yeah, I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, even if. Um, even if um, she's, she's traveled with me at all, I, I just pay on my personal account for the travel. Like, I don't want to have her on the same plane going to the same place. I just pay for it personally. It's it's not worth the uh, slight tax saving to be audited. Even, right, if they, right. even, even though they might never notice, I just like, oh, I'll just pay the extra couple of hundred bucks in tax. I don't, I don't care. It's like, because you know you are going to work. Like, it's a, if it's a business trip and they're just going to like hang out in LA or something you're still working full time but you're not going to convince the tax man if they audit you so it's better to just better to just pretend it's a holiday and pay for it i think when yeah, yeah. The, flight, the flight from miami to vegas for the conference you should have that on a separate ticket so you can write it off because that's 100 percent business travel because you're absolutely so. and I, I tried to jump on uh, jet blue mint for that flight but it doesn't look like it'll be available that day unfortunately Students yeah, I don't think they do it from uh, Florida. Do they? Do they? Uh, it's, it's like New York to Chicago to San I mean, Francisco. It's, really, it's really just um, their transcontinental competition to LA, um, AA and United yeah. and stuff. They hardly run it. But they're adding more routes. They're adding a lot more. So I think it'll be on a lot of routes soon. It's pretty cool. Um, so we've got um, the EU's geo-blocking restrictions now. Garrett's back. Yeah. <laughs> So this is kind of funny um, because Google has um, just added geo-blocking to their um, search engine in Europe. Like if you visit some other country's search engine, it'll automatically force you to like .co.uk for me. Um, and they're going to be forced by this new law to uh, un-geo-block. Because um, it's going to be European law that if you have a website, say you have an e-commerce store that has like... Um, you know, a Spanish and a German section, and you sell things at different prices. The that's probably fine, but you can't block the Spanish users from seeing the German prices using geoblocking, and you can't like if your search engine like Google force um, Spanish users to only see your Spanish search results if they want to see German stuff like that. I didn't even know that this was a practice that was occurring. Uh, obviously, because we don't have to deal with that here. But that just sounds crazy that that was like an acceptable thing for however long. I was shocked Google did it. Um, it kind of messed up rank tracking in Europe for a while. Um, yeah. Took the rank trackers a while to to get up to speed after that happened. But it's just kind of stupid. I mean, it, it's like you say, it would be like if you couldn't buy. I, mean, I guess there are things you guys can't buy cross border because I know Gary Vaynerchuk's always um, rambling about Texas not letting him sell wine. Um, from out of state, so I guess there's a few products that um, state into commerce laws stop you from buying. Yeah, up. you can't but, uh, ship alcohol to Minnesota either. I don't believe, unless they changed it. Yeah, so I mean, other than a few products, you can buy, like you could buy, then you could buy like a table from Jersey or something, and that would be fine. Like, right, right, right. it seems kind of stupid that. If you're in Spain, you can't. You would find it difficult to go to the German website and order a order a table from Germany. So I think it makes sense to block this. Um, but some of the points people have made is like some people do it just for a user experience thing. Like people go to the same .dot com and they automatically get their correct page, and they're talking about you know what's the right solution to it. And Google's obviously penalizing people that put a pop up there. Uh, intrusive pop-ups on first visit, but of course, the best user experience is often 
because you might be a Spanish person living in Germany and you might always want the Spanish version of your site or you might, you know, all different. So asking you and letting you pick might be the best, cover. Um, option. And like American Airlines and BA do it. When you go to their website, it always asks me, you know, do you want the American or British version? Um, so, uh, what, what was what was that about geoblocking? <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm having a rough day, but yeah, <laughs> I hope that's something nice and strong you're drinking there, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> but yes, yeah, so I think I think what Google's penalising there is if if the article's right and they would penalise sites doing it, like American Airlines. Um, I think it's actually the best user experience in a lot of cases, like. If I'm booking flights in America, I don't want American Airlines estimated price in pounds based on some random exchange rate that my and then but then they charge your credit card company in dollars and you find out what the real price is. I want to just be on the American Airlines US site, book it in dollars. And but if I'm booking transatlantic from the UK, I want to compare them to BA, so I want the price in, you know. So you I think it's a good user experience in a lot of cases to be able to choose and I don't think I'm not like swearing American Airlines that they've popped up. Which one do you want? So I think Google's probably wrong there. Um, but you say, so yeah, you've got to be careful not to automatically um, 301 people to a specific site based on their IP. You've got to give them some way to get to whatever they want. Right. So if someone that delivered. Makes, that, that makes sense. Yeah. So a lot of European e-commerce stores, if you went to like the .es Spanish one and you were in Germany, it would just automatically redirect you to Germany. That you probably shouldn't do after this new regulation comes in later in the year. <laughs> um, so it's quite an old article, this one. I can't remember when it comes in. I think this was written with it due to come out late this year. So it was a year ahead they were writing. Yeah, November 28th, it says yeah, of 17. Yeah. And I think this was coming this year, so definitely something um, people be ready for this year if you're doing big e-commerce SEO. Yeah. We got some kind of screenshot here. What was this? Oh, Garrett's one. Yeah, yeah. So um, I was on People Per Hour earlier this week and I saw this guy. Some guy was selling links on Microsoft.com for like 150 bucks or something. So I, you know, I looked at his little listing and uh, by the way, all the links to the show are in the video description if people are looking for them. Um, I was on the second one, the one from uh, Minneapolis. Oh, did I miss one? Oh, sorry. I got ahead of myself. <laughs> Local stuff. Yeah, I'm having a hell of a day. Um, I haven't looked at like a local query lately, but I've, I guess I have, but I've never seen these little cards at the top now, the Google guaranteed stuff. I remember they were going to roll them out, but this is the first time I've seen them out in the wild. I'm, just, I'm trying to uh, locate this here. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see the same thing. That's, that's uh, different. Usually I see like some kind of wonky uh, sort of changes that I'm just guessing that they uh, are just testing out because it'll be there one day and be gone the next. So what uh, does uh, Google guaranteed mean? Okay, yeah, there's a whole... Uh, I think we spoke about it on the show and we saw it for the... Um, there was talk... Oh, which industry? It was locksmiths, wasn't it? They were doing yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And they had to be licensed. They had to send in like okay. some information to Google. So there was a, a whole verify. It, it's really more. It's an attempt to weed out all the lead gen and rank and rent guys, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, this is their own lead gen. Like, so these people are paying per lead to Google. Um, well, they were in the locksmith space during that beta. I don't know what the score of this is. I think the thing that shocked me is that like. Um, You've got those at the top, then three ads, then the map pack, which I don't know if this map pack, uh, have we got to scroll down? No, we can't see. But like some of the map packs are having one of the three listings taken by an ad. So there's going to be some search results in this where one, um, there's seven ads at the top. In this one, the map pack only has two, nothing else. Everything is deleted. And then if we did sewer repair Minneapolis, 
jeans again was in the map pack, but that was the only one. And there's obviously way more sewer and water companies out there that should be in there. Yeah, and like that one has like uh, no reviews, and mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I get um, I, I get Ron the sewer rat for uh, sewer repair Minneapolis. <laughs> That's a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool business name. I like that. Props to you, Ron. <clears throat> Forty-five glowing reviews as well. So he should yeah, be number well, one. Well, why isn't well, he number one? <laughs> when I search from uh, from my location, I don't have the actual map, so the organic listings are a little bit higher. But uh, I, I do have the uh, Google guaranteed cards and. and it's kind of weird. It's kind of weird. You're not getting the map, and I'm getting it in the UK. That's kind of interesting. Yeah. Are you using a, a VPN? No. No. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, things are always changing. What do you do? If we knew why Google did what they did, we'd be all a little bit more wealthy than we are right now. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, so that was interesting to see. Um, back to this Microsoft thing. So. I didn't understand what this, what this okay, was. Okay, so this guy said he's selling links on Microsoft.com doesn't have any examples so I asked him to send me an example and he actually sends me a screenshot of this page with the with the URL blocked off and his name blocked off and I'm like okay and this guy's infinite logic he doesn't realize I can just search for something in the description and obviously right. I'm gonna find it so I find it and I'm like okay so this isn't exactly on Microsoft.com and I wanted to make sure that I'm sure this technet subdomain obviously has a lot of authority which it does so I was okay I'm like okay that's kind of kosher and then I'm like okay I don't I don't use a, like a no follow do follow plugin and don't necessarily care but you know so I looked at the page source to see if the links that he put in in the description to the customer's site were do follow and then I realized that's right Microsoft loads these description boxes in JavaScript and they're handled as an event so in the source code, none of that uh, description text is there, meaning the link isn't there. All right. And I asked this guy, are these links actually crawled somehow? And he's, he, he swears that they're in, they get indexed and <clears throat> they show up in the search console or whatever. But I guess this is kind of a really technical question. You know, if you look at the source code of this page, there's no link anywhere. It's obviously be loading... Being Google's loaded. Google's cache of that page is empty. It's it's blank. Um, for me, anyway. I don't know if you guys paste it too quickly. And uh, how do I get to the? So I didn't know if all of a sudden Google can actually um, load an event handler. You know the way that Microsoft does this, and uh, not just read the source code, but scrape it. I mean most modern JavaScript frameworks Google can read somewhat, but it appears that the uh, like I say the if you guys want to have a look as well the the cache is completely blank for this page, so it doesn't seem to have ah. uh, it's, it's, yeah. well like you know those accordion content plugins like when you get the tab content as like a, a feature on your site that's all JavaScript and usually they can render that and, and index the content in that. But, Quite often uh, they choose not to. If you put too many of them on a page, they start just ignoring all of them because SEOs overuse those to uh, put spam on pages they don't want users to see. So imagine like uh, a review of a, t a table like uh, um, e-commerce store. They would stuff like 4,000 words about right, the table. Right. into it. So they can read it, but whether they choose to or not. I'm just going to try and see if I put... Um, so if you um, if you, are if you then, click and then, if you click a view source, it does have the entire page the, the source of the page, but obviously still omitted is that description tab. Yeah, I'm just quickly uh, <sighs> seeing if, seeing if it's in the index. Yeah, like okay. So if you put this search in, um, I don't know if someone wants to pop this in the comments as well quickly. Let me just, uh, send it to you guys. If you put in that search query, um, which I've taken some stuff from the description box and searched it, um, that you'll see on the search result that is in the Google index. So it does appear to be indexing that description 
Firefox. So that's interesting. How's Google rendering this? Same way your browser is. They, they so use, they're, um, they, they, they're not just reading source code, they're scraping a... Uh, oh, they definitely, they're definitely way past reading just source code. They, um, they use a modified version of the uh, Chrome engine for browsing sites. Mm -hmm. JavaScript rendering is still limited, but they're, they're not just indexing source code. They can index tons of JavaScript really well. So, what I still want to see is... Does the link count? <laughs> yeah, so can you tell from... Uh, I guess that'd be tough. You can't tell. Yeah. How much uh, is he charging for one of these? Um, I want to say it's like 150. Thought about trying it out. <laughs> yeah, 150 cheap. bucks to a domain that has no links and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, it's just it's just another trick. Another, you know, if it works now, it probably won't work for long. Yeah, yeah. I don't think. Um, I mean, this falls under kind of sites with masses of user-generated content, I doubt yeah. Google's giving this much authority. And then the best thing about this is if you go to download this tool that he's put up, Malwarebytes flags it as not just malware, ransomware. Which is surprising that it's still on Microsoft's site. Is the tool part of the link <coughs> sale? Or is the tool with something he added um, this is his way to get the link. He's going to upload a tool and get it approved, and then in the tool description is a link to your web website. <clears throat> so it's just like, you know, remember like um, the old infographic directories or design directories? You used to just have to upload a design, and then you could put your description in, whatever you wanted, and link to your site in your description. It's just another version of that. It's just... Yeah. A submit your own, except I guess Microsoft is supposed to vet these, so Google might still trust them, which would be kind of judging by this example, pretty stupid but certainly plausible, I guess Hey, if the guy found a way uh, to get legitimate links from Microsoft that work for now more power to him but I don't, I don't see it working for long if it... Well, and it's just, it's, just, it's just one link, I mean yeah. It's not scalable. As a, I mean, I guess maybe there's hundreds of places where you can upload uh, upload your dodgy software and get a link to your developer page. Maybe there are like 50 of those. Uh, I, wonder, I wonder. I'm talking more of it. Of him selling it as a service for 150 bucks a pop. Oh, right. <laughs> oh well, yeah. Well, you know, he's not selling much of this shit. Yeah, but, you know, I was whatever. just curious. Yeah, he only has five contributions. I'm trying to level up the conversation to help uh, you know people that are trying to be a little bit more black hat. Um, you know, so I guess if you if you can find like 50 places that still let you upload code, put your own description in. Um, maybe there's some kind of outputs you need to get first before you get a link in your description or whatever. But I bet there's some. Sure. Microsoft won't be the only place you can upload a tool or a download, put your description in, and get a do follow link. So. If you're in the if you're in the tech space, it might be an easy way to pick up 50 uh, <laughs> pretty legit links. Like if you're a software company, it can't really be unnatural to be uploading random bits of software to places. Well, I'm sure that you could do it for any niche if you're if you're creative enough. You know, make a tool oh, for yeah, yeah. You know, if you're a finance site, make a mortgage calculator and upload that shit. Yeah, it's a, good, it's, a good, it's a good idea, Ben. We're going to upload 50 mortgage calculators. <laughs> there you go. So, I think this next one... <laughs> what, Neil Patel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this guy, Martin McDonald... He's pretty, screen, Martin's pretty funny. <laughs> upload a screenshot of about seven articles on Neil Patel which is the same content or the same topic just rephrased in seven different ways. Nine step cheat sheet to stealing your competition's best links ideas. Uh, how to steal your competition's backlinks and then a oh. CO cheat sheet steal your competitor's rankings yeah. steal their featured uh, snippets I mean to be fair to Neil I, from what I understand he hasn't written one of his own posts in about ten years now so 
you know, he didn't write these. <laughs> so he, I also should have saved it, but he made some comments earlier this week that I don't know the exact words, but he was kind of saying SEO is an absolute waste of time. You're an absolute fucking idiot for doing it. You need to be doing paid traffic. You need to be doing influencer marketing. You need to be doing ads, 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 ads. Ads, 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 ads. He also said in a video, um, which he definitely made because it was him in it and he can't outsource <laughs> being himself yet. Um, he also said uh, you shouldn't bother ever starting a real business now. Real businesses are now just making up something um, and then selling people a course on it. He's like, oh, you, all know, you all know something. Like, you know, you had a zit when you were in school and you got rid of it by washing it and stuff. Maybe you washed it a special way and you can sell a course on that for 50 bucks and people will be happy to pay. I was like, geez, I was some, it, was, it wasn't that exact example, but it was just as bad. And it was like, um, he did it like, uh, it must have been a month after um, Russell Brunson wrote Expert Secrets. So it's like he's, he's got his free copy of expert secrets from Russell and he's like oh this is a great idea I'm going to make a video about this and pretend I came up with it it's like, at least at least admit you got it from somewhere like you're not yeah. just suddenly doing this after after a guy has a best selling book about it that we know your buddy's with and you're just suddenly doing the same thing a month later it's like come on dude at least say my good friend Russell Brunson's book <laughs> is where I got this idea from. in the comments of, of that tweet somebody shared a, a, a video that Neil posted on LinkedIn last week, which I'm showing in the uh, chat right now. Um, and the video is titled, Some of You Hate Me, Some of You Love Me. For those of you that hate me, it's probably because I'm an aggressive marketer. No. Here are three bold marketing campaigns that made me millions. So he's basically saying, I don't give a fuck if you hate what I do. I'm rich. Too bad. Well, I don't hate what he does. I think it's just funny um, when you see stuff like like this uh, sloppy work and stuff. Like if he was consulting with a client and he looked at their blog and it was like this, like he would tell them it was dumb. But it's on his own blog, just the same. And apparently, he paid a dozen or dozens of underwear models to hold up signs on Instagram saying "Who is Neil Patel?" And and apparently, it worked very well. Well, you know, it sounds like something that would work really well. Should we get the uh, should we get forty seven thousand underwear models to hold up a word agent sign on Instagram? I wouldn't mind it. I I can't read, so when I need writing, I use word agents. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm only joking. Underwear models are all super smart. <laughs> uh, I honestly haven't. The reason everyone's ripping on Neil a little bit more than average at the minute is he appeared on like some top 10 SEOs list. I haven't found the list, but everyone's ranting about it. Um, the people did, are pretty did, annoyed. Did you see that on Spark Toro trending? <laughs> I haven't looked at that since I saw that it was all Mars and Spark Toro content on there. Um, I'm not entirely sure uh, what people were smoking when they uh, all started tweeting at exactly the same time about how they'd discovered so many invaluable things they never would have found on there because um, I feel like you'd have found just the same crap on Inbound before they shut it down. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Spark Toro, I'm glad you mentioned it. I deliberately didn't put um, the latest Spark Toro news on here because I felt like we'd talked about it too much. But since you've mentioned it, I'll do a quick one minute segue. He's released his um, fundraising papers online for free with minimal redactions. Um, so we can now officially reveal the approximate pricing of Spark Toro when it goes live. The agency pricing is going to be $500 and the single um, freelancer pricing is going to be $75 a month. Um, and it's going to be it's going to be just amazing. It's going to give you all these numbers on influencers. And uh, I'm assuming it's not going to work in Europe because it appears to violate GDPR if it did. So I'm guessing it's going to be a US only product. Um, it uh, Yeah, it's, it doesn't sound very useful. Like you type in this is his actual description of how it works. You type in something like cycling, cycle racing, and it's going to tell you which Instagram accounts and um, news outlets are read a lot by people who do cycle racing. I'm pretty sure you could just uh, find those people pretty easily. Yeah. 
Well, uh, I think the, didn't Buzzstream had a free service that that uh, that did that for you? Buzz, Buzzstream has something. Um, Follower Wonk has it for Twitter, which I know was a product that Moz bought, ruined, and then gave away again. Um, the thing is, what, what he's forgetting is he's solving the part of the problem that isn't a problem. The problem with influencer marketing isn't finding the influencers. Like, you can find more influencers than you can ever email in 20 minutes. He's solving the finding lots of the right people problem. That's not where the problem people are having is. People are having the problem with pitching the right people and convincing them to accept your budget. Right. And this tool doesn't solve that problem. And it's so it's kind of an irrelevant um, it's solving a problem that no one has no one has a problem that they can't find enough influences to pitch it sounds like he needs to bring in a new CEO to fix the problem for him uh, yeah I feel like a new CEO would be uh, the ideal step for that company it'd be uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe sir, maybe um, after Moz finds the exit a bird will come and save him for a second time <laughs> Uh, this is becoming a weekly column for us. He should, he should, put, that, he should have put that on the uh, the papers. Actually, he should have been like, and uh, and if it all goes wrong, Sarah Bird will come and save the company again, like she did. Last <laughs> <time>. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh, she's doing, she's doing a good job. She's doing a good job considering the state of that she took over. But yeah, Neil Patel when, when he lost NeilPatel dot com. He did so with this case study of $100,000 in a year from a brand new blog to 12 months. And I thought that was awesome, and he was putting out tutorials every other day. And then all of a sudden, it just it started becoming less of tutorials and more just rehashed shit, uh, saying the same thing in, in, in many different ways. Well, he's, this, all about, uh, he's all about the uh, LinkedIn video now. Yeah. Not doing his blogging, he's uh, trying to convince you that you should become a Russell Brunson style expert secret guy. How is he making money from doing that? Oh, it's just he, he makes all of his money from being famous. Yeah. Like he gets paid loads of money to come and speak, he gets paid loads of money for an hour on the phone with big companies. He's in a different game from where you have to sell like little. But the people who buy his little products too, like if he. he if he gets enough attention and people opt into his lists and stuff and he sells something tiny you know 50 buck thing or something he's going to sell like you know 10,000 of them for sending one email out <laughs> I mean I bet he sold loads of that thing Brian Dean did with them that was pretty disappointing of Brian Dean compared with the content he puts out in his own name normally um, right, right. but I'm guessing I'm guessing to be fair I have ripped on Brian for that a few times but I'm guessing to be fair to Brian that uh Neil Patel maintained most of the editorial control over that monstrosity. Yeah, yeah. I bet he. Or, but I bet. But I bet he sold loads of it. Or or Neil Patel's content team. More like. Yeah. Well, Neil Patel said he paid um, Brian Dean three thousand dollars per video. Now they were about eight minutes to ten minutes long each, twenty at most. So. Oh, I is, that said, the, is that that YouTube Academy? It was no. It was originally sold as Quick Sprout University. I don't know if they've rebranded it. It's been repackaged several times. Like it was free initially, then it was for sale, then it was something else. But I mean, I certainly don't blame Brian Dean for uh, accepting three thousand dollars a video to rip out some ten-minute videos. Like, here's how to put a link in your YouTube bio and funnel some authority to it. Right. Back, that's back to YouTube is still a follow the link you got on your profile. I mean, I'll do almost anything video by the for ten minutes, <laughs> within the realms of decency, of course. Right. So I don't blame Brad too much. Oh, uh, next up, I saw some cool little—I uh, don't know—a little cool little tip about uh, on LinkedIn from this guy named John Esperian. If you're attending an event, why not pat, uh, pop the hashtag for the event into your Twitter bio a few days beforehand? So when people are looking on Twitter for what's going on with the event, you're going to show up. And So you guys do that for Minneapolis, sir? Yeah, I suppose yeah. I should. I'm going to check out Twitter right now and see if there is a uh, hashtag for that. If there isn't, just make one. Yeah. Start, uh, start pounding it out there. MN Search Summit. 
That's a really good idea, though. I mean, it's that kind of just simple thing. Yeah. Um, like, your Twitter bio is not showing up in search much, because how, you know, how, uh, how many B2B... Twitter bio? Just on the Twitter homepage, when, you, when you're when you on there, you can click somewhere to edit your profile, and then you can change everything, like the picture and bio. So is it hashtag MNSEO? I don't know. Oh. Whatever, whatever the hashtag people are using is. I guess you have to know the hashtag. Well, uh, I'm on their I'm on their Twitter page right now, and I'm not, I'm not seeing them push pushing anything. So you might have to keep an eye out on the day and change it live in the fails. Yeah. Well, I just what what what's their handle? It's at MN Search. Ah, MN Search. Just just do hashtag MN Search then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do that because it's MN Search somewhere. That's right. Yeah. Uh, from the pictures on this page, <laughs> it looks like this is gonna be a very 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 small. Yeah, quote unquote conference. Yeah. yeah, it was a little bit too small for me to fly out, fly internationally for. But uh, I'm going down to Philly on the 27th to meet up with Nick uh, Eubanks. He's doing another uh, technical SEO meetup down in Philly, so that should be fun. And uh, and in, in October we have, we've got Vegas. I feel like I want to go to more this year. You can come to, well, at, can come at, to Thailand at, with me. I'm not going to Thailand. I'm at Leeds SEO. Uh, yeah, that Thailand one is just going to be a holiday. I mean, a totally real work trip. Um, next week, um, search Leeds for those of you in Europe. Um, it's one of the bigger European conferences, not in the top 10, probably in the top 20. Um, run by the same people that run Brighton SEO. Um, a lot more locals will be there because apparently Leeds is um, the capital of SEO companies in the UK. Like everyone's based up there, so um, a lot more people will be in-house agencies and stuff like that. Um, and what other one am I going to? I think it's September. There's um, inbound learn inbound over in Dublin. I'll be at that one. Cool. Uh, that should be pretty cool. Oh. Are any coming over to Dublin in September? Nah, I'm happening. I thought you were going to do like every conference this year. Uh, let me. I'm I'm building up to a uh, to a stride here, buddy. The 2019 like will be the year. Then Adler will be a year old, and I can just uh, bring him with and get the hotel babysitter. And nice. Yeah, that'll work pretty well, actually. Yeah. I can't wait to go to one of these big ones, like uh, trafficking conversions. I'm going to go to. Well, I mean, I think um, PubCon's going to be huge. Oh, is it? From, from yeah. what I hear, PubCon's probably one of the best. It, just from, it's one from the their homepage, it just, it just kind of looks small. Just from the no, no, PubCon is like um, 30 yeah, times. Yeah, so we months. went to Ungagged last November, and everyone was like, so you went to Ungagged, but not PubCon? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from what I... Uh, gathered after last year is that people just stayed for Ungag as like an extra gimme after PubCon. Well we just went to Ungag because uh, Joe was going Cygnus SEO. Oh yeah? Yeah. Because um, obviously we're doing a lot more influencer marketing stuff and he's, he's sort of founder of IntelliFluence and he likes to talk about black hat things as you guys know from who watched the 24 hours of SEO as well so um, unfortunately, he was the only, well, for us anyway, he was the only notable person that was worth seeing. Um, I think if you were a beginner, some of the other presentations would have been pretty useful, but um, we got to hang out with some of the speakers, though, because we had a dinner. Um, some of the speakers came along, argued about politics with one of our clients. Um, it was pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> He was busy. Uh, he was busy making America great again with a Scottish socialist. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> pretty funny. Hopefully that that didn't get too awkward for you. We we sat them as far apart as we could during dinner. The <laughs> <laughs> right thing to do. Oh, I can't so. wait though, man. It's gonna be fun. So, so I'll see you in Dublin anyway. <laughs> I'll make it overseas uh, in 2019. There's actually um, there's a really good one 
um, I keep meaning to go to. It's uh, down in, it's like, I don't know, they bill it as being like the Slovenian Riviera. Um, but they only have like one tiny bit of coast or whatever. But um, I'll find the link for you guys next time. It's supposed to be really good, but it's like you, um, it's in a five star like beach resort. So, but the price is there. It's like a hundred bucks a night in like a luxury hotel. So you get a lot more comfort than you'll get at like the uh, the airport Hilton or something when you fly into. Nice, nice. But we won't go into that again after. Uh... <laughs> at the airport Hilton in Gatwick. <laughs> I forgot about that. Anyways, it's just what uh, just just what you need before sixteen hours of flying is. Uh, did, did you get your suitcase, man? Yeah, I did. You did. And Delta gave me a check, no questions asked. So can't complain too oh, much Delta. about that. Delta, pretty good. Cool. Yeah, I just sent in the receipts. And they, I, I must have shredded the check. Yeah, I don't know what it was. Three hundred and thirty bucks. What do we got for uh, mobile monkey here? Yeah, so Larry Kim, um, who's uh, pretty famous um, for his word streaming presentations um, on the SEO conference circuit, has sold it for many, many millions. Um, I think, I can't remember what the number was now, it was either 13 or 30, I think it might have been 30 million he sold it for. And he's now started up uh, Mobile Monkey, um, which is uh, a Facebook Messenger marketing platform. Um, which sounds kind of high risk to me because obviously you're dependent on Facebook, I guess, leaving their API open and allowing your app. To I be thought running. they, I thought Facebook had said that they plan on cutting API access at some point. That was for some parts of their ad platform, I thought, rather than generally. Maybe I'm wrong. How, how, how is this different from like ManyChat? Well, I guess I we won't know. find out until uh... <laughs> until it's launched. <laughs> Well, until it's a lot bigger and like, you know. Yeah. Um, Chat last Facebook Messenger contest. It's a, it's, a, a, uh, it's the number eight most popular author on Medium. You know, it's, he's got to know what he's doing, right? Yeah, no, I'm not saying. It's just, it's a, it's a, the same kind of thing as many chat from, from what I can say. Just hit up your contacts, hit up groups, leverage AI to serve content the users want. Maybe maybe you'll get messages with content suggestions. Who knows? Looks pretty cool. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think like there there is more and more opportunity in automating some of this stuff. Um, it worries me though, having seen what was that awful company where you got you kept getting followed on Twitter by all of their staff with the same bullshit messages, and they're like a Twitter or marketing automation platform. Which company was that, Garrett? We got bombarded by them when we started the company. Like every member of their staff followed followed uh, his book. I vaguely remember that happening, but now I don't. Yeah, know. I can't remember the. But yeah, there was a company doing this on Twitter, and the it was just so aggressive and spammy and dumb because it didn't work across the whole of their company. So you just have the whole the team would connect with you because you had the profile match for what they're putting in, and they would all spam you with the same messages. It's like. Do you want us to sign up for this tool and it's embarrassing you? Like, and you're supposed to know how to use your own tool? I mean, I have more faith in Larry Kim than that, but um, it, it worries me that when these tools get launched, there's going to be people who use them that kind of way. Um, it's just going to increase the noise to the point where Facebook restricts more of it. And then people like Garrett who are in the groups doing stuff manually, they get kind of drowned out by all... Because no one sends Twitter DMs anymore to connect with new people or to... Like, if someone connects with you on Twitter, the worst possible way you can say your first thing to them is by Twitter DM, because they won't read it. Right. Even people, wow. who's, even people who say to you, like someone who has said they wanted to help out with the 24 hours of SEO and getting us some more, um, more of a diverse speaker panel, because they were prominent in doing that kind of thing oh yeah connect me on twitter send me a dm send the dm and never got read or replied yeah but like an app to them it got an insta reply like like give me your email i'll send it to you there and stuff well, so it's I, like I, I i've gotten i've gotten the uh the many chat uh messages through facebook but it's only from from accounts that i have followed so i don't think it's going to be from um 
Well, so it's with the DMs, unless you turn on on connected people DMing you. I just mean because of the way it works, like you connect, you insta get a message from the idiot. Like, I don't know, like I've hardly got any Twitter followers. I've got like 700 or something. But, you know, 500 of those people sent some bullshit yeah, message. Yeah, 700. With... Yeah. I have like 20. Well, you know, <laughs> they're less famous than me. <laughs> Where's but I, uh, <laughs> on, on Instagram, what I found is if you if you follow a like a lifestyle account or like an interest account, you know, like I, I followed an account um, that had pictures of, of of nice watches, on and as soon as you follow something like that, you'll get like twenty requests from a bot, basically uh, sure. that that's a, a, a similar topic. And that's super annoying because then you have to go in and just manually, you know, decline, decline, decline twenty times. Yeah, so. it it does worry me when people create these like noise making devices on a platform, because um, it leads to that channel just becoming closed, like no one looks at it anymore. Because then Facebook used to have an email address, that you could email any user on or something. Yeah, everyone got yeah. like a Facebook. Box yeah, yeah, yeah. It died out. It was yeah, whatever thing. your username at the time was at facebook.com. Right, right, right. And you know, forward it to your account, yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, the, these kind of nice features of platforms can be killed really, really easily by marketers. Link yeah, but, but the best, you know, it, it's, it's how quickly you adopt it. If, if, if you jump in when it's, you know, trending up. Uh, you can probably make a quick buck. Uh, oh, yeah. I have absolute faith in uh, Larry Kim to have this company sold for thirty million before the uh, before the downturn happens. But <laughs> before uh, before Facebook integrates it as a feature into their own service. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's tougher for Facebook because they can't really launch a spam our users service as one of their. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can see them ad putting in their ad platform, and then and then people. Oh yes, the sponsored messages like in mails for yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then you would have to opt out of, of receiving those type of messages or something like that. Well, they, 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 they do they do it for the Facebook game too. So if you ever use like a, a messenger game, um, like Tetris or something like that, uh, the Tetris app will start messaging your account with like yeah. promotions to play their other yeah. games or things like that. Yeah. So it's already kind of kind of weird. Yeah. Anyway. AdWords notes have arrived. Do any of us actually use AdWords? Do you guys? No. Oh, no, I just thought this was an interesting one for the viewers because I know a lot of the agencies that, that watch the show, they do AdWords for their clients. Um, so it's, it's just a way to... Um, <laughs> Add more like depth to what you're doing. So when if you've got multiple people working on on an account and someone's making a change or testing something, you can you can have proper notes there that leaves you with an audit trail. Um, so I'm guessing most agencies maintained all this kind of stuff separately. Like they'd have a change log for what they what they uploaded to AdWords, and you'd have to keep all these notes separately and review them offline and stuff like that. And the, the client the client them now as well so they're going to see all the work that's going on in their account constantly without you having to you know yeah i did something with like go in and see there's all these notes on there as well and, and it looks like you can add notes to specific events as well so if you get if you have a spike in traffic you can actually just click on on the spike on the graph and and add a note in right there to remind yourself kind of what you know what you did there or what, what caused it I, th I thought that was a cool feature. Yeah, it sounds it sounds super cool for AdWords users. I mean, it's not going to change anyone's lives completely, but if you're maintaining logs offline so you can report to clients, this is going to make your life super easy. Yes. And for the executive team and the account people who aren't doing the campaign, like if you get a call from a client, oh, what's going on with this? You can jump in and your team will have put notes on. Yeah, so that's, you that's a big help for account guys, though. Because before they would have had to get the AdWords account up, get their CRM up separately, and try and tally the dates together and scrolling yeah. around. Now they're just like, like you said, then just hovering over a note on the graph where there was a drop or a spike, and they'd be like, "Oh yeah, that was the day we cut the budget because we were <laughs> launching a new campaign the next day." Yeah, 
now, now somebody has to figure out how to pull these notes into uh, into Salesforce mm -hmm. or Power BI has... or BI or something, so that yeah. Will Reynolds can make a make a weird graph out of them. He seems <laughs> to spend, he's a uh, uh, he should um, he should just hang out with Dr. Pete Pre here. I think he's like super into uh, super into big data. Like I think he should just uh, go full nerd now and just hang out with Dr. Pete because like. Uh, Seems to enjoy it like way more than uh, anything else about SEO. I, I don't really follow him, but uh... yeah, he's gone full. Like um, all he talks about now is data. He's like super into it. Like it's, everything goes into Power BI and all these weird charts. And Interesting. I don't know. It's not not obviously something that I get too into at all. Um, yeah, it sounds like that that type of data is probably. Too expensive for guys like us to access. So. Well, for our own sake, definitely. I mean, I imagine loads of our clients. Um, well, definitely our enterprise clients. I mean, they're spending a fortune to do all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it's kind of in well, it's kind of interesting to see an agency doing it for their clients, though. Um, loads of big data analysis and uh, the one cool thing Sia did put out. Um, I don't know if we've ever shared it on the show. We, I'm, I, if we haven't, I'll check all the show notes quickly, and if we haven't shared it, I'll share it. But uh, most years, they put out a block list for so for people who do run of network type, um, you know, display advertising on on Google on their display network. There's a whole bunch of sites that they have found, along with like ten other agencies they partnered with or something. Mm -hmm. They find sites that are just never performing the conversions for their clients. They block list them. And they maintain a master block list like on display network that you don't ever want to be displayed on, and they give that away so that you can just import it into your campaigns. And they reckon it's worth about an 18% boost to your campaign performance if you throw that list into most campaigns. And they give that free. So that's one super cool thing that they do. Um, it's kind of interesting. While we're on the AdWords topic. Uh, eventually we'll get into it because you know Neil Patel uh, said so. Yeah. Well, now he said it. I'm I'm even more sure that I shouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's this uh, agency WSI World article? Who, who brought this in here? Uh, have we got the screen? Have we got the screenshot as well underneath? Yeah. yeah. So you need to look at the you need to look at the screenshot first. Oh, uh, okay. I was wondering. Uh, so I was like, what? What the hell is this company? Um, like, I mean, is that what they think um, people in PR look like for starters? <laughs> Just like, no, it's aimed at uh, like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to put this nicely. It's like the picture looks oh, like it was taken. So on stupid a that I didn't do this before. It's kind of like that look on your face, like ah. <laughs> It more looks like she's looking at like a funny cat video on her phone and thinks it's really funny. She looks like she, looks like she, she did math or something. <laughs> uh, that's not what math looks like. But uh, not, what, not, I was, not, what I was surprised about was Not after a few <laughs> years, no. I, I remember the faces of meth campaign the drug treatment companies <laughs> run. Um, some pretty, uh, pretty horrific faces on that, so yeah, that's true. Are, are they trying uh, yeah, to so I've been seeing this ad constantly. Um, so I just thought oh, I've got to see what the hell it is, and it's like some kind of really—I don't know. They do this for like every sector in digital. Like they have landing pages for designers, PR firms, you know, all kinds of different stuff. And you're supposed to sign up for their like reseller. They're like some kind of. I don't know. They're like the action coach of. Uh, it, it seems like they're trying to reveal digital marketing as a hot new strategy. You know, way too late into the game here. Well, yeah. they're trying to pick up digital marketing professionals who are struggling and tell them that their magic system is going to solve all of their problems. It's like, oh Jesus! You I'm sure. You know, if you, uh, you know. Put yourself in front of a, uh, enough eyes. That I'm sure they convert somewhat, but I can't imagine that they make a really nice ROI on, on that advertising. Well, apparently, 
they, they've they've invested in uh, making sure that they're. Uh, I think it's really disingenuous the way people market themselves. Though, like some of WSI's amazing partnerships, HubSpot. Now, HubSpot can correct me if I'm wrong, but I would bet that it's them that's given money to HubSpot to become a HubSpot partner, not the other way around. <laughs> Because uh, their landing page, you know, with the opt-in, with the, all the questions to fill yeah, in, yeah. Report, that looks really, really similar to most people's HubSpot white paper type things. So I think this is on. I think this site's probably powered by HubSpot, like a HubSpot uh, template or something like that. Well, HubSpot's a whole like uh, it's like WordPress with marketing automation built in. It's kind of my easiest. It's yeah, more than that. It, it is. Uh, that's, 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 yeah. See, so like they're saying, you know some of our amazing partnerships as if HubSpot have partnered with them. They've paid to become a HubSpot partner, I would, I would imagine. <laughs> well, and like Google partner, that just means they spend a load of money on ads and they've done the tests. And like Google hasn't paid to become a WSI partner. I mean, it's, it's really disingenuous how uh, people market themselves in this industry. It's... Uh, I mean, oh, if you, I mean, if you go to delete all the stuff after it and just go to agency.wsiworld.com and you can see, uh, you can see what um, the founder looks like. <laughs> I will, I will just say presented without comment. Ah, looks totally the same. <laughs> you think they'd pick a better uh, face of the company? <laughs> well, and not just like, up. oh, I got my mouth, mouth hanging open here and. Did you guys ever? Did you guys I, ever see the movie Howard the Duck in the eighties? No. Uh, and my joke doesn't uh, matter. Well, some of the viewers might have seen it, but uh, but yeah, this is like I guess this is a Vistira um, embedded video. Just a little pro tip for you guys, since you're digital marketing experts, you can change the the featured image so that it's not the one where you've got your mouth like this. Um, just a little. But yeah, and they somehow they think this 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 insane um, tube map type thing. <laughs> I just um, scrolled to that. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I mean, I, <laughs> apparently it's adaptive SEO if you do forums plus content syndication. I mean, that's some pretty elite modern shit right there. Industry directories and competitive oh, analysis. Google authorships. Oh, Lovely okay. Enough. Fucking hell, we're back in 2003. Oh my god. Are, are you following, just just follow one of the lines and it just doesn't make any 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 sense. This is awful. E email CRM. Ongoing support. Lead management. Yeah, this is pretty uh, pretty embarrassing stuff. Um, and for some reason, uh, I don't know, like... But Facebook ads isn't on the track for social. It's on the track for a website and paid search. Oh, no, it, it... Oh, yeah, it isn't. Oh, yeah, no, no, that's not how the tube map works. It connects both ways. <laughs> You've never ridden the London Underground, have you? Like, that, that uh -huh. it's connects... It connects to keyword analysis. Oh, I, I see that. I see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hashtag registration. What is that? Oh, you've never registered your hashtags. Do, do, do I have to pay a, a one-time fee of eighty dollars oh, for my hashtag big, big, detergent? Big companies actually pay to get them like trademarked and stuff. Ah. Uh. <laughs> like if you're like Bud Light or something, <sighs> and like, like a thirty million Super Bowl campaign, you probably don't want other people stealing. The Olympics do it, don't they? Like you can't tweet about the Olympics and put pictures of their athletes in and stuff without them spazzing out if you're a brand. Um, I imagine that's what they mean. But yeah, this is pretty... Uh, it, it's how, how many buzzwords can I get onto a single graphic? And they, we they think, got a lot. Think, uh, it's okay though because we think we're great. Oh my god. I mean, their agency accelerator program could change your life then. Do you not want to just get on board and start accelerating your agency now? 
So I couldn't help myself with this one. I think we should put these guys on the list for one of our uh, official calls and interviews. I think what we're going to have to do with those, because of the time of the show, we can never get hold of anyone. Um, I think we should do like our, our like, we called it a prank call, but it's not really a prank call. It's like a straight up interview. We phone up and tell them they're on SU Unmasked and we think they're stupid. Can they defend? <laughs> um, so I think what we'll do is we'll start recording that separately and we can like, uh, you guys won't see it on the live show, but Garrett will just uh, edit it in somehow or something on the recording. I don't know. Does that sound possible, Garrett? Or can we show it live? Does, is that Do what again? Possible? Like if we did the prank call, or not the prank call, the um, feature interview with a bank. Um, so like we rang these guys up and asked to speak to uh, Dan. I'd have to... A, uh, can you stream it live then into the show? I'd have to download this, this show, put it in new Adobe, and then cut it apart and put it back up. So it wouldn't be the original. YouTube doesn't have that power with the built-in editor to stick something into it. So we can't just, like, um, during the show, you have it on your screen and just stream the... Oh. Uh, I think Order. I can... Let me... A source. A media file. Yeah, so I can take a video. Yeah, that should work. Cool. Yeah. So I think we're going to we're gonna record... Probably we'll have a day. Um, it's going to be... It's going to be July or something, so don't expect this feature in the next couple of shows because we're really busy. Um, I'm at a conference next week, um, but probably July we'll we'll take a, like a half day and we'll do like ten of these calls, and then we'll have like a few months worth of just to throw in the shows. And you can see some of our uh, live. I love that idea. Yeah, because then we've got them done. Um, and you guys can actually see them because we never get hold of anyone and whilst it is funny watching Garrett leave a voicemail message on some random <laughs> dude's answer phone it's not quite as fun as if we get to speak to some of these people so I think they're on the list for sure last news yeah yeah uh, so, I, I so Go ahead, what Greg. is Greg's what is, uh, there, is it something in America or UK or uh, Greg's is like I'm trying to think what your equivalent would be. Have you got like a place where you would buy like just kind of a quick snack for lunch type, like a grab and go type? You could sit in there like it's kind of like half a cafe, but mostly like just a people going to coffee or a Starbucks. Like 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 Boston Market. Yeah, yeah, it's that kind of thing, I guess. Yeah, probably not. Probably not with as nice stuff. They've started doing more. Um, so do they have a bad image, and that's why they did this Gregory and Gregory thing? Yeah, yeah, like people, people think they're like, you go in for a sausage roll type thing. And they're trying to say, well, we do this, uh, we do these hipsters salads now to come in, please. Um, so, did you, see the actual, did you see the actual video? Uh, I didn't see the video, no, I just no. saw the, the shots. I'm going to share it in our Skype chat if you want to okay. add it in. It's, it's actually pretty, pretty cringy. The uh, well, what they did is they, they pulled all these foodies at a, at a foodie festival into thinking that they were eating this hit new salad company, fresh, you know, whatever. And uh, they get them caught, you know, uh, after the reveal showing, no, it's from, it's from Greg's. And, uh, you know, it's just, it just proves the, uh, the, the bullshit people are speaking uh, <laughs> when it comes to foodie and, and, okay, and so just, this you know, looks like something Greg's looks like uh, like in Minnesota you know like you go to the gas station to get shit same, same everywhere but like Minnesota has Quick Trip and so does Wisconsin where it's like oh like a Wawa yeah kind of like a Wawa like yeah. a little more than a, like a normal gas station convenience store like the food is slightly nicer and but it's still gas station food, which I'm guessing is Greg's point here. That it's, it's still Greg's. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, the main reason I shared it was uh, not really about the campaign. It was just how um, they were talking about how agencies are. Everyone's too silent. So the um, the creative agency did this piece, um, but it wasn't the the on-site people didn't put a video up. There was no on-site content. There was nothing promoting it on Greg's yeah, website. That, that, so this guy liked it and wanted to like share it with people after he liked it or not. He wanted to share it with people and it couldn't go viral because there was nothing there was nothing to share. There was no way you could find the ad anywhere. Right. Yeah, so, I had to search for it on Google. 
so the left hand really didn't know what the right hand was doing at the, at the company. And, uh, you know, so it should have been on the company blog. It should have been featured on all their social media. Um, but it was, you know, they, they shot themselves in the foot. Yeah, and they give it a second to be a little laugh about it because their core customer thinks these kind of people are twonks anyway. So they could have had a little laugh at these people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know. So essentially, they're, they're, they're throttling their own reach or not just. Just yeah. through not organized, yeah. Right. So, and I think sometimes we're all guilty of that. Like, we'll do something really cool, and something will happen. Like, some particular segment will all start commenting on it or sharing something that we've done outreach for. And we won't necessarily bother doing anything with that. We're just like, oh, cool, that did quite well. We've got to... Whereas, really, we should build a follow on engagement with those people. And so, it's easy to do even within your silo um, let alone when it's a big company campaign and stuff so uh, that was the main reason I shared I didn't really have an opinion on uh, whether I would ever eat a Greg salad I'm guessing probably not like salad I, did, I loved it just to see, to, to see the rea- when I saw the reactions of the people when they found out because I'm, sure perf- I'm sure it's perfectly fine I mean their cheap shit is perfectly fine for what it is yeah. I mean it's all perfectly fine so I'm sure if I there was you know nowhere else on the high street open at some weird time and I wanted a salad I'm sure Greg's would be fine but salads are kind of easy and cheap to make at home so I don't really <laughs> I can't see myself buying one in a in a takeout particularly but um, pretty cool anyway so we're up to our main news section and this is all Steve today yeah yeah so uh, you guys have to talk about it then otherwise I'm just bragging <laughs> Well, you did. You talked about last week. You uh, launched a guest post. When did it go live? Yesterday or two days ago? It went live on Monday. Yeah, it went live on Monday over at Brand Builders. Brand Builders is a, uh, a service that does made-for-you uh, AdSense websites, and Steve did a guest post on analyzing and beating your competitors' link strategies. Um, I thought it was great, Steve. I said before um, you went into a lot of de- detail into figuring out how many links you actually need. To uh, to compete and exceed um, compared to your competitors. Yeah, and just to give you guys an idea um, where the idea came from, I was talking to Andrew over at Brand Builders, and obviously they have students, um, they have courses, so they have people across the whole range of internet marketers. And the people, by the time people get to ordering from Ben and ourselves, they tend to be much further along the experience curve. Like they already know they need you know I need 200 articles I need or, or in some cases uh, in Vince's case they need 9 million words by the end of next month or whatever um, you know just, uh, these kind of things yeah, but those kind of people aren't um, at the beginning of their journey um, and I was just talking to Andrew about what he thought the challenges were for people at the beginning of their journey like people that are trying to figure out not like right at the beginning like they haven't even got an idea what they're doing at all yet but people who are trying to build a site or trying to grow some kind of business online and and we were just kind of bounce some ideas around and this is one that kind of came up in a few of our conversations too so we, we kind of ran with it and it was around you know when you're starting out how far behind are you really from the people you need to beat to start getting somewhere so to be in those positions like eighth to tenth on page one how far behind are you and so I just uh, walk people through you know how you find the relevant people to look at how you actually assess how many links they've got because people are still in this kind of idea that oh yeah I'll just build five links and then we'll wait six months and see what happens and if I move up then I'll order some more links from you and we tell those people usually that's not going to be a good idea for you you're better off not giving us that money um, and this is kind of that explanation that I've probably given on the phone 20 times written out for me <coughs> as, a, as a really good article that I can refer people to now and um, hopefully it'll be useful to um, the students and readers over at Brand Builders as well because you have to start out knowing how far behind you are and if what you want to do is realistic or not like if you're not going to see any significant traction unless you build 20 links a month if you build 16 and all other things are equal you're just going to be further behind than you were at the end of right. a year not so even if you've even if you've built 
even if you've added more content than you had before, you've built more links, you've improved your site speed, if you're still behind on all three of those things in a year's time, even though your site's better, you'll be ranking less well. Because you've fallen further behind the people that you're competing with. So, and I'm not saying that's realistic, like in most niches, if you did all of that stuff, you'd be moving somewhere, but um, when you start thinking about it in terms of micro budgets, where it might be ordering three articles a month from word agents, building five links every other month from us, it's quite easy to imagine a lot of niches where that's going to have no impact at all. Right. You're so gonna... uh, the, the, the obvious question I, I see popping up for especially authority site builders and niche site builders uh, who have a lot of websites that they're constantly turning out is, you know, how do they, should they start using this, uh, I guess, research and, and as part of um, how they determine if they, they should enter a niche or not? Because I, I, def I definitely would. I mean, when we enter a niche, we don't worry about it because are we playing more of a long game because we're looking to make some large exits in five to seven years' time? Right. So if we're a thousand links behind, we're like, all right, yeah, so that'll be one of the last ones we catch up on. Um, but if you're trying to make your first hit and you haven't got cash flow reserves and you haven't got money to just keep going for seven years without worrying about it, you need to know can I get to where I make money within a year from this project? Um, so, uh, otherwise, you're just going to have to accrue links until you get to 500 different domains. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, and, and I'm just covering the links here. There's the content too. There's, right. all the, there's all the other stuff you have to do. So if you can't even afford... Yeah, development time. I mean, if you can't even afford the links either in your own time or outsourced, then you add the content on top, then you add the development, then you add... So it's definitely something that should be part of your decision, whether you enter a niche or not, for sure. It really highlights how important competitive research is and, uh, you know, your keyword research. You know, a, a lot of people think, oh, that, that medium, low-medium keyword is fine. I, I, I can beat that. Uh, the, you know, in, in this day and age, you really can't unless you have the budget to do it. Uh, and I owe, I owe a big thanks to Garrett for this post because uh, it was based on um, the idea he had a, a long time ago back when we were still a consulting agency. He used to just throw a little section of this kind of analysis into all of our reports, just a couple of paragraphs. Um, a much lighter analysis than this. This is more like what you would do for yourself if you were doing it. Like It's a really thorough job. Obviously, you can't do 20 hours of analysis like this or 10 hours or however long it takes you. <coughs> every time you do a client pitch, but Garrett would spend an hour on it just putting some of these basic numbers together, like here are your five main competitors that you need to get past first, here's how many links ahead they are in real terms, so we'd assess the value of the links and come up with a, a kind of rough estimate, and then here's how many they're building. So yeah, I guess it's important to say that we're, we're speaking on like a really overall basis, not, you may very well able to be really behind on links or something, and still snipe out pages from competitors where for whatever reason you know the, you can just snipe stuff out still so yeah especially when you compete against bigger websites yeah there, there's there's often keywords that are just like too below their radar that they won't touch but you know that's, yeah, that's, that's how you that's, that's like that point in the piece uh, it's there's two levels to the analysis there's the, there's the kind of final boss level where you look at everything that you need to be and then there's the all right, so to know that I'm onto a winner with this niche, I know Vince is a huge believer in this, like, uh, this strategy. You pick the keywords you want to win first, look how far behind you are just for those specific keywords. You build out a little base of success and money and starts coming in when you break through in that little segment. And then you broaden it out to start taking over more and more of the niche gradually. As you See, I have such an awful bad habit. I'm just like... I require that we dominate, whether it's today or for a year from now. Like, Vin, Vin's probably a lot more fiscally sens uh, sensible because I'm just like, whether I make any money for zero months or eighteen months, I'm gonna have it all. At, like, I, I, yeah, I just I just start focusing on way too much of it. I definitely go on tilt with content sometimes. Like, I'll, I'll be like looking at competitors and be like, this this fucker has fifty more pages than me, and I'm just like. 
order 50 pages of 2,000 word articles, you know, so I've definitely done that multiple times before, but for yeah, the Garrett, Garrett does that, and I'm like, what budget have you allocated for this site this month? There is like, no budget. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just, uh, it's on the system, man, and uh, we're going to build 40 links. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, like, okay. <laughs> like, all right, okay. It, 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 hurts when, it hurts when you look at your uh, your spend for the month, but it feels pretty good when you're, when you're dropping 50 hey. posts at once, and then you can see all those new keywords show up. And, hey, when you're and, the uh, uh, nose, nose hair waxing authority in the entire world, <laughs> you come talk to me, because I'll, I'll tell you something about that. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of funny thing that can happen though. Like you, um, you, you're doing like a uh, like a weightlifting site, and uh, you become the authority on like uh, I don't know, like anal beards or something. Is that <laughs> it's like why is that the page? That's the yeah. page. That's the I sent this page like. over to to Vin, and um, the reason I sent it over to you, I guess I wasn't really clear, is because that page started ranking a while ago. Did, at the time, he hadn't built any links to it. You know, the, the site has a very small authority. Yeah, I mean that site's and, brand new, really. But but that page, even though it's somewhat more difficult than the stuff that we can't rank for yet, just ranks fantastically well. And now that we've started building links to it directly, it's blowing up. But I was just surprised that I didn't know if there was some sort of thing in the content that just stuck out perfectly. And just ranks what because it did rank well, just on its and then, own. And Vin told us the content was crap, so I'm, I'm even more, <laughs> I'm even more confused now why yeah. it's doing so well. That's why I asked because I'm like, I know there uh, are some some pages yeah, on our that site. Those that, are see, you got a couple of wide open keywords that, that that you're ranking for on that page. But with the stuff I was telling you, I think it was just from a conversion standpoint. Once you start getting traffic onto that page. Yeah, uh, yeah that, that, that whole site has to be tidied up. It's such a mess. It's, yeah. we're, just, we're, just slapping, uh, we're just slapping stuff up slowly. And I don't know. We, we haven't even done like 80 links or something to it yet. And that's the thing. People are like so impatient. They're like, you know, I've, I've launched this like narrow tail site. I want to rank for, uh, I'm trying to think. The problem is we have so many clients. I have to think of an example that none of our clients are doing. <coughs> like I want to rank for... Um, Science Journal. Um, I've uh, I've built forty links and it and I've got fifty pages of content and I'm not number one yet. It's like you need I don't know five hundred links and oh, right <laughs> two thousand pages of content. I mean and a lot more age. Yeah, but a lot more age. Yeah, they're not playing the the right game and I'd hate to take money from someone you know when it's a lot of money to them for five links a month if they're not going to get what they want. Right. So it's another reason why I've written this article. Because I have this conversation with people as much as I yeah. can, but some people you just don't ever get to know. Like they they come to you, they they tell you they've got plenty of money and they they just start ordering and. Yeah, but you know it's a responsible thing to do. It's like, all right, dude, I'm happy to take a thousand bucks off you. But the reality is, you're going to spend $1,000 a month with me for four years and get absolutely nowhere. And uh, I will say, what, though, that sometimes sometimes I'm grotesquely wrong. Um, right. We had, we, had, we had a client who, he ordered 10 links. He was in like a really competitive niche. I mean, it's just insane. And he's like, I'm going to order 10 and see what happens. I'm like, oh, dude, look, this is a waste of your time. Like, you're going to get 10 links. Nothing's going to happen don't give me the money it's just not going to work for you it's like no no no, no. i want to test it because like uh, my buddy uses you guys and so he kind of talked me into it. i was like look i'll i'll take the money i'll do your 10 links but i don't think this is the test that's going to work for you and he's like yeah whatever i'll just try it out and he ordered the 10 links and then three months later he sends me his like google analytics graph he's like yeah fuck you i was right and it's like got this big spike on like and so, yeah, this, <laughs> but honestly, so that's the, kind of like a. I mean, yeah, it's good. So some, it doesn't happen very often. Like no, no, of course it doesn't happen much, and the, that that was a uh, you know. So sometimes you're wrong. Like you, if you're like super, if your content, his content was really, really good. I just didn't think in such a competitive niche, having really, really good content would be enough. 
but I guess that's uh, that's proof that it can be. Like if your content is genuinely better than everyone else, a much smaller number of links will move to the content bridge. Then you'll need the average number of links. I think people uh, people are not very good at just content. Um, like everyone says their content is the best, um, but. There's, you have a thousand competitors in search, you know, 20 of which are relevant in any niche. You have to be really good to actually be the best. Like yeah. something you, you've outsourced on Upwork for $12 and then edited a bit yourself probably isn't the best. You can make it look a bit pretty. Um, and even, where, if it's, even if you have the best article uh, on a given topic, it's got to match what Google assumes people want to see uh, on that search too for for the keyword. Right, yeah, that's always like the flaw in the ointment. It's like you could write a a realistic. This is what the people of the world want to see, but Google, for whatever reason, may say, for some reason, we don't expect that to be right. We want yeah. this instead, and they could be totally wrong. But hey, what are you gonna do? Who was it spoke about that on the twenty four hours? Was that? Nick spoke about it, or you spoke about that. Someone spoke about. That. I think that was Nick with his, or either Nick or Vin. Maybe it was Vin. Um. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I talked. I talked about looking at the search and, and seeing the uh, style of content, or whether it's an e-commerce listing, an article, uh, you know, reviews, maybe a local search, and then you could uh, kind of emulate your content based on what's showing up. Uh, well, we're gonna give we're gonna give Ben credit for that one then. Sorry, Nick, if it was as well. Probably was. I, Nick as well. I, I Nick, think Ben. Was Nick really went into tough. a lot of Nick went into a lot of detail on that kind of stuff too, around um, working out what to write about, and lots of complicated maths to make it make sense. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's a really good presentation, actually. I mean, both Ben's and Nick's. Um, who else? Jared's was fantastic. Um, oh, Mr. Jared wants to come back on the show. Because, oh, definitely, uh, we get him on that. Next week's a really good week to book him on, in just in case um, Dave and I at the conference are running late, but don't quite make the start and stuff. I'm next not going to be. I'm not going to be here next week. I'm, I'm oh gonna yes, we were going to cancel yeah. next week, weren't we? Yeah. Right, right. The week yeah. after, me and Gary at the conference, but we could try to do it from the hotel, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll, so yeah, the next two weeks we might not have a show, but Garrett will decide, I guess like two hours before or something <laughs> whether it's going to run whether we can pull it up um, so if you guys have got some like uh, good dinner to go to or something that's more uh, cause it's, quite a, it's, quite a short, it's quite a short conference isn't it you got to get max value if you go to one of these little one day ones Garrett, Garrett offered me a specific dinner and I completely shot him down I was like no I don't want that well, fucking shit I was like I'm not eating that but we'll be doing uh, something. No, there's plenty of places to go. <laughs> well, you know, you'll be with some uh, other people. You might just have to eat whatever they like. Yeah, yeah. Time. No, when in Rome. I mean, look, you're not you're not in Finland. It's not like Garrett's going to open up a tin of like rotting fish that's been buried in the ground for nine years and tell you oh to eat that. Oh my god, my friends went. That's uh, is that Finland or I think that's, that's Norway. Fin Finland. Oh, maybe it isn't. I. Oh yeah, Finland might be blood soup. They have like some weird blood soup. It's it's fermented shark fin that they bury in so the sand. So the Min the Minnesota thing to eat would be lutefisk. What is that? Uh, <laughs> not something good. It's a like fermented codfish, and oh. it is not it is not pleasant. It's that sounds like that sounds like the Finnish one. Yeah, yeah it's like an old Swedish or Norwegian thing. I think. It, Norwegian, I think. Yeah, Norwegian. I, I don't know. Yeah, my yeah, and uh, yeah, my, I think my grandma made us eat it when I was a kid. Like we all had to eat it once. I mean, my cousins. And it's not good. It's like something that they had back in the old country when you had no money, and it's just like this is your rite of passage to eat this fucking right, disgusting. Right. <laughs> so you're gonna have a couple of tins when you're in town, then. Yeah, yeah I can't, I've never been to uh, to Minnesota, so. It'll be a good time. Well, I mean, we can always go to the number seven and get the meat cart. I'm sure little John's told you about the meat cart. 
Is that, is that special to me, Kurt? <laughs> no, so a couple of years ago we were in downtown Minneapolis and Seven's a steakhouse, so we went in there and, and you sit down, whatever, and order a drink. And you're looking at the menu, and I was going to have scallops that night, and John wanted a steak. I'm like, whatever, fuck yeah. And uh, so the waiter comes back with this cart, and it has all these, <laughs> has all these steaks on it. And this guy is just pushy as fuck. Like, uh, John, you know, John's not exactly a big guy. Like, a house steak, like, like a six ounce steak is enough to fill him up. You know, he's only like five and a half feet tall and weighs 150 pounds. Not a, not a big guy, you know. And this waiter is just super pushy. Like, you know, well, I brought the meat cart all the way out here and you need to try this, you know, pound and a half sirloin and blah, 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 blah. And he just kept going on and on and on and on about this fucking meat cart. So it's always been an inside joke. Like, <laughs> Come try my meat cart. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll eat good food, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, there'll be plenty of drinking anyway. It's a conference, oh, yeah. right? So. Yeah. I, I have, I've been through last week, and I'm not drinking this weekend just to uh, prepare prepare my body. I was a bit confused by American conferences where the drinking was consigned to certain parts of the day. Instead of like from breakfast onwards, oh, like it is so like the best thing about Brighton FCO, oh, you want a beer? Eight o'clock. <laughs> I guess I didn't get there until like two in the afternoon. But <laughs> the yeah, bar, the bar, the bar, the bar, open. the bar opens. The bar opens in the morning. Like oh, yeah. it's, uh, uh, you know, you just it's like a, I was really confused. And I guess that's one like, thing I did like about the bar London. Open? You know, I flew a red eye <laughs> flight and got in there at seven thirty, and the only nice thing was. Every bar is open. I can still go get a beer at eight o'clock in the morning. And, uh... Here in New York, it always pisses me off because whenever I, I leave for business or whatever, you know, my flight is always early in the morning, and I get to the airport and I want to have a drink immediately at the airport while I wait for the, the plane. And if your flight is before eight thirty in the morning, no booze. Oh, really? No booze. Even in, the, even, even in the business class lounge. Right. It's, it's 10 o'clock here in the morning. Wow. Yeah. That's disgusting. I mean, you should be able to... Like, at UK airports, you go into the business class lounge, they've got all the uh, they got all the booze laid out for you. You just walk yeah. up and free yourself, like a half pint of scotch if you want. And sit ben, can you can you buy liquor? Or can you go to a liquor store on Sundays? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, what do you have? The blue sky laws, or the blue state laws, or something like that. I think it's you just can't buy liquor before 10 a.m. on Sundays in New York. Yeah, so up until a year ago, couldn't buy liquor here. You couldn't buy. You couldn't. Liquor stores had to be closed. You couldn't buy beer. You couldn't buy wine. It, it, it's it's just it's just the, t the time period when when yeah. most church service is going on, like 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, <laughs> but the ironic thing is, in Minnesota. When those laws were passed, every city was so small, you know, just a few hundred people. A town of 500 people would have four bars, and bars were allowed, <laughs> and bars were allowed to sell liquor, you know, from 10 to midnight. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to go to the bar anyways. And what well, blows my mind, is, and, and, and Steve, you probably know this, in, in Pennsylvania, all the liquor is sold by the state. You can only buy it's like from like Canada, yeah. Uh, that like is crazy to me. You can buy beer, but you have to go into a bar, and they'll sell you like a six pack. That's what club. that's what that's what weirds me out. Like you go into the supermarket, and they have like you can sit down and drink a few bottles of beer that you bought in there, but they have like a two bottle maximum that you're allowed to at drink. At the grocery house. store. Yeah. yeah, in Pennsylvania, but you can't buy liquor in there. You have to go next door if you want like wine and liquor. It's like I what, would what, feel what, like what is this? There's, there's people in a shop just drinking beer like in I would feel like I, I reached a new low if I just went to the grocery store and like yeah I'm gonna buy two Bud Lights and uh... it's, it's just it's just the, the way they do it and and the liquor and the wine store is, is a state run facility so it's like the DMV it's like no frills this is empty room of a store yeah and you just I mean, well, no, they're, they're pretty they're pretty um pretty decent to be fair to pennsylvania like there's a there was a good selection of uh whiskeys uh, it was a uh, some of the ones are pretty pretty huge it's like a warehouse yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It, i mean yeah it, it's low frills in terms of service because you just you know there's no like staff walking around to advise you on your uh, whiskey <laughs> selection but uh, i don't know the prices seem pretty reasonable 
Um, a lot cheaper than Las Vegas, I'll tell you that for nothing. I mean, Garrett bought like a high west double rye or something in Vegas. And I can't remember what he got charged now, like $54 or something. No, I mean, that's like no. $27 yeah. bottle of whiskey or something. That's insane. I pay like. I haven't bought a bottle for a while, but. I think I pay about 42 bucks here in Vegas. It was 70 something after tax. You still, you still drinking that after your uh, acid reflux disaster? No, I've been drinking a lot of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just, um, white, white spirits are the key if you're a uh, acid reflux sufferer. Gin and vodka. It might have a lot to do with it because, you know, I rarely have to take a pride suck anymore. I am. I have been eating better, and I, yeah, Vin and I have talked about that. Planning yeah. meals and eating better definitely helps too. Chris, uh, our content manager, was out, out for almost two weeks. He's just been, you know, been putting in a few hours here and there when he could because he's been dealing with the same thing. Oh. It's insane, insane. Oh, uh, too much whiskey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think he burned an, ul- an ulcer into his stomach. Is, is <laughs> Right. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, get him on to uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or something. It sounds yeah. like he's uh, too far. Let, let me call our rehab facility so I can get a commission. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll get you booked up right away. <laughs> they actually they put you on a they put, put they'll put him on a plane down to uh, Florida tomorrow if you want. Oh, I bet it's uh, nine thirty three. There must be a red eye sooner than that. Oh yeah, yeah. They'll get him on a red eye today. So can give you me get the it? insurance card. And <laughs> can, you, uh, can you drop him at the airport at half past ten? Oh, I sure can. Excellent. If he, answer, if he answers his phone. <laughs> his wife or whatever would be like, what the hell's going on? It's like, hey, yeah. He's, speaking of he's New going York. In for treatment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is up with JFK's airport? What about I it? feel Happen- like when you go through security, you're at Ellis Island. And it's just this long line that never ends. It's it's one of those snake lines that if you probably stretched it all out, it would be a mile long, and uh, and they have like these sections within the within the <laughs> line where there's dogs walking back and forth, you know, sniffing the people on the line for drugs, and it, it takes a good forty five minutes to get through during during peak times. You know, I was yeah, I went through at peak and I was surprised the length of that line. 45 minutes was reasonable for how long that line was. Um, when, when, when were you here? When I came back from England, I had a connection uh, to JFK. You should have told me. I, I barely didn't. I barely didn't get on my plane <laughs> to Minneapolis. It was. It's, it's, it's only 20 minutes away from me. I, I could have came out for a beer. I didn't even. I barely got on my other plane. I was really pissed off. Yeah. Um, what I'm saying was about to say before is we don't have business class lounges at JFK or LaGuardia. There, there's only the Delta Lounge, and if you're not a member or if you're not a, uh, if you don't have an Amex credit card, it's uh, sixty dollars entry for the day. Uh, if you're gonna spend a few hours there, the Delta lounges are always really good. Um, yeah, it's all f- free drinks and food and well, you, just, you just need to accumulate your status up then you'll, you'll do it in 2019 if you go to all these conferences they have an admirals club for um one world members like myself that i can go to for free at jfk nice it's uh, open 4 a.m till 1 a.m and so they won't give me drink at like half eight or whatever <laughs> maybe in the admirals club but uh, i last time i was in, in the in the gold in the in the gold admirals club i'm because i'm not gold anymore like in the the gold tier one they uh it's free poor liquor like with british airways so i don't imagine they're policing that too well well they, they don't put it out they have these carts these ice carts that they bring them all out at eight thirty, and they put them the free really? pour yeah Wow, they they give you drink on the plane out of uh because I I flew from uh, Minneapolis really early in the morning to Chicago and because uh, I was the only person who didn't fall asleep straight away on the plane, the girl was really keen to give me as many gin and tonics as she could bring. I was, <laughs> even when I did fall asleep, like I, I dozed off with uh, like a little bit of gin and tonic left in my glass, and she like woke me up with my next drink. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> 
she wants to keep you snoozing through it throughout I was, the flight. I was, I was like, you're really that bored, but I, I mean, you know, on a normal flight, I wouldn't have complained, but. We've been up pretty late, and then I only had like three hours at the hotel, so I didn't go to sleep. I just packed my stuff and sure. waited for the Uber time, and then pushed the button. Um, but I was I because I was so tired. It took me like ages to like get organized to leave, and I was running really <laughs> late. And so the Uber exec driver turns up, and I'm like, I'm running a bit late for my flight. And he goes like, Don't worry, we'll get you there. And he just literally just throws my bags in the car <laughs> and runs for his door. And I'm like, Get in, and he just like stamps on it. He's <laughs> like, All That's... right, we're running a we're running a little bit late, but it's six in the morning. I don't think we're gonna hit traffic. <laughs> That's good service right there. It was. It was. I gave him. I gave him a good tip because uh, he definitely um, definitely got me to the airport pretty quick. That was pretty fun. <laughs> when I when I want to go to Manhattan to hang out with friends and, and drink, I don't take the train or and I certainly don't drive. I usually take an Uber. Mm -hmm. And this one guy, I guess I don't know how he didn't know this, but he took me uh, through the Midtown Tunnel during rush hour, <laughs> and uh, it was a it was a two hour two and a half hour car ride for what should be for like 45 minutes. Even in rush hour, if you've gone the right way, it would have been just it, it, in, in rush hour, if I, if I went the right way, which would have been the Queens, um, Queensboro Bridge, it would have been a, uh, an hour and a half. So like about double the normal amount of time. But this was nearly quadruple. And uh, I gave the guy a good tip, but I, you know, I, I don't think I could have tipped him well enough for... Ooh, no, because when, when they're in traffic, they yeah. like in a, in a normal cab. The like stationary time meet the meter moves pretty aggressively, and Uber they get virtually nothing while they're stationary. And, and really, any waiting time. And it, it was just it was really uh, <laughs> it was tragic for him because we had already passed the last exit on the uh, on the freeway before the tunnel and we were sitting in that no man's land for yeah. an hour and a half and he was just like shaking his head and we were just not moving it moving an inch but it's his own fault if you don't look at a freaking gps when you're an uber driver yeah all the drivers here use ways yeah you don't trust the uber app navigation like but especially in new york city how do you not check the traffic report first yeah, I mean New York the traffic is just because like London's bad, but it's not like mega bad because of the congestion zone. Like no one outside London drives to London because by the time you pay the congestion charge, you may as well have just got a first class train ticket. Yeah, yeah. So like, why would you drive down and pay the congestion charge if you can drink some wine on the train and not drive? Um, but like New York, obviously it's you know it's America. So I'll tell it's you, a, buddy. It's a, it's no, a nobody's, nobody's drinking wine on our trains. It's uh, you know it's, not even in first class in the dining car. On no, that that doesn't something. exist. Oh, and oh, Amtrak. Amtrak has a dining car in first yeah, class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amtrak is a different story. Well, our our local train, you know, for Long Island is is. Garrett didn't believe me. Like, we got the train, and I was like, "Oh yeah, this one doesn't have service, so we have to bring our own liquor." And he's like, "You can just like uh, sit on the train." And I like the uh, the other woman who was with us in first class. Like, um, we're getting our we get tonics out that we've bought in the shop, and uh, she's like, "Oh, cool, you guys are drinking? I can get my wine out." And she gets her wine out, and I was like, "I told you, everyone everyone here drinks on the train after work." <laughs> Yeah, that's how it is here. It's, it's a Long Island Railroad. It goes, you know, services all Long Island straight to the city. But it's, uh, you know, you're a mix of, of all different types of people. So, you know, if you have your six pack of whatever, you'll have like a construction guy stumbling down the uh, the, <laughs> the aisle and offering you a dollar for a beer, and uh, you don't get too much peace and quiet uh, on that train. No, that doesn't sound good. I uh, I very much like the uh, first class section on our trains because it's uh, not a lot of extra money, but it's just enough that there's yeah. not many other people in there, so it's just the right amount. <laughs> there you go. Very much just the right amount. All right, boys. I think uh, did we we cover everything, or I think yeah, so. Good this week. 
sorry we were late, guys. Um, Garrett, as you can tell, has had a pretty tough day. Well, Garrett's had a pretty fucking tough two weeks. Yeah. I think he needs uh, like a seven-day weekend or something now. Had a tough year. <laughs> yeah. Had that right. Don't worry, buddy. Two weeks. Two weeks we'll be drinking in yeah. sunny Minneapolis or sunny St. Paul. You guys get your hotels and stuff booked. You haven't left yeah, since the yeah. last minute. Yeah, I booked. Yeah. I'm staying at the Hilton, though. I don't think Ben is. Uh, I'm staying at the official hotel for the conference. That's a rookie mistake. Always stay at the Hilton. Collect those points, man. <sighs> next, Anyways, year, uh, next year, when you're traveling in 2019, you won't make a rookie mistake like that. You'll be collecting those Hilton points everywhere you go, man. <laughs> All right, so Vin's not here next week, right? I'm not here next week. Okay. So does Jared want to come on or should I find here. someone else? Well, Jared wants to come on, so I'll put okay. you guys in contact. Right. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll talk to him. Yeah. And it might, and, and you may or may not then have uh, me and Dave join you as well, live from. Oh, yeah. Live from yeah. Leeds SEO. Sounds good. Um, but we are hanging out with uh, some pretty. Uh, oh, maybe I'll, so. If Jared will come, and then I'll maybe I'll see if uh, Trevor Schwecker. And then now we we have at least three guaranteed, and then if you guys. To make it, yeah, whatever. Well, yeah, yeah. Then we haven't got a rush. Like, if we yeah. join, we join half twelve or whatever. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Ooh. We'll jump in for right. the feature conversation. All right. Well, then we'll see you next week. I'll be on time unless I uh, put a bullet in my head for this fucking movie. <laughs> 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 Don't say it. <laughs> All, All right. right. Uh, the dog yeah. needs me. Adios. Yeah. <laughs> from me to the dog. Yep. Ciao.